Before starting the topic, I would like to give you a small background to what is my interest in the topic. Uh, when I was a student in the college, uh, those were the days when, uh, or maybe they still had a little less acceptance. I'm talking about something like 26 years back. And uh, we used to have a lot of patients in the OPD, but uh, often the patients would come and tell you, you know, that I had a fever last week and I went to the doctor. Okay. So he meant that he went to a allopathic practitioner and that's how he discontinued our treatment because he was coming to you for some headaches or some uh, irritable bowel or some joint pain here and there. And when it came to you on a simple fever, he thought we were not doctors almost, you know, in layman terms. So this always uh, pinched me a little. And uh, I used to ask my teachers and friends who were there, uh, starting from second year when you start going to the OPD as two. What is this, you know? The, uh, is it so difficult to treat acute that they, these people, though they feel only with these very good science, for something as bad as psoriasis, they would put trust on you. But for something as simple as a flu, they don't put trust on you. Yeah? They come to you for a long standing arthritis of 10 years, asthma of 15 years. But fever of 1.5 minutes, they are afraid to touch you. What's this? You know, this was one of the most pinching things. So my interest started about this topic from that time. That whole homeopathy was discovered with the synchrona thing, and synchrona was something connected to fever. And it's a very, very big paradox that being homeopath or a student of homeopathy, uh, we all feel so difficult, you know, to handle uh, infection case, and that of that infectious. That means you have additional responsibility to keeping the patient, uh, controlling the patient as soon as possible. And uh, that is somewhere where we are still not trusted about. Even what, when we are talking about today, we have to realize that uh, homeopathy has just entered. Last two years is the first time in India that they are considering now homeopathy as a very viable option for infectious diseases in national health programs. Something has just begun. That also is not picked up very strongly. Yeah, But luckily, people support us because a lot of cases include and uh, starting from student days that is how I was studying, I was kind of searching when I went to public hospitals I learned that I should not be missing out or I should not it should not be that I don't know anything about any infection case diagnosing or observing or treating from the other person's angle also so then tomorrow when I apply my science I would know how to answer I would know how to answer relatives how to answer take care of the patients and uh, then only I can see homeopathy even to try for infectious cases. Uh, so this is one of the things which was in my mind when I went there and so I am sharing some of those cases which I feel have been nice cases of infections which we, which I have treated. Uh, they are all not very very sugary cases. There are some phases in between which are tensions, stresses. There is some phase where I almost felt there was a failure. and. Uh, we had little time, so I tried to select something which suit our today's purpose, you know. So the purpose of day today is that don't just think it is my case and I'm presenting to you. Okay. Think we are solving some cases together. All your qu queries are fine. Okay. You forget that I am there in the field for 25 years. Fine. I am here for two minutes as yet. So I am as junior as you when I am treating a nice new case. That's, that's, I think that's the worst part and the best part of homeopathy. Okay, that even if you are the most experienced, it's not sure whether tomorrow's influenza case you will treat surely in speed. Nobody's so sure. And the best part is also that, that even after the, everything that you've done, a new case is still very, very interesting. Okay, so it's the way you look at it. The uncertainty can generate a lot of interest. The uncertainty can keep you on uh, your toes that every new thing is a challenge for you. So we'll try to see these things as our challenge together, right? Some of the slides are not written the remedy as yet, so that you know we can apply our mind together. And uh, for that travel, we'll need to just simply follow very, very basic logic. Okay? All these experiences and everything comes through if we go on working and go on working with logic. And what is the importance of logic is very, very simple. You know, if you remember childhood, we had a game, a jigsaw. Yeah? These pieces don't make sense 
until you know on the reverse side of the piece, piece is there is some picture okay and then we connected them so you learn by observing that I don't think we all can escape and that is why we probably need to learn through lot of cases from each other you know it's only through cases that we can overcome this challenge we are still at probably beginning of the journey you know as far as homeopathy is concerned though it's tried 200 years back and though probably Hanuman was so successful in treating infections he was probably very successful otherwise he wouldn't have those cues that he had outside his clinic you know he wouldn't have gathered so many cases to derive such a logic but it is still at a phase where all the governments in the world are not thinking homeopathy to be a even second alternative for treating infections okay so that means we have a lot of things to work on we have a lot of jigsaws to still pass solve you know so we have to learn from a lot of cases we have to learn a lot about clinical diagnosis we have to learn about that how we best make person diagnosis so that we don't miss the remedies because without the remedy all of our clinical diagnosis can also go in waste and we have to see that we make totality and we plan good management this is one of the first important message I would like to give out infectious diseases it's not just finding the remedy which we generally have a very default way of functioning as homeopath okay a lot of us speak that once you find remedy everything is one according to me finding a remedy is hardly 20% of the job okay nowadays finding a remedy is not so difficult as it was difficult few years back you know you've got programs like homepath you've got so many new books you've got so many authors you've got so many case presentations you've got so many training programs like this going on finding a remedy I think has become a little easier even casting has become a little stronger but where our field still has a big gray area is number one is mindset where I can treat this you know most of us carry that anxiety from our college days about what we can do about infection is not so sure not so strong so that's the first thing the second thing is we do not make very powerful management plans when you are solving a case it's not just finding the right remedy it's like managing that whole situation managing the situation has a lot of things you know you have to take care of a lot of things and that is why you have to use a lot of weapons apart from your medicines these are all the weapons that we need your patient must be talked to properly about what is his diagnosis his relatives have to be talked explained properly as to why homeopathy for that condition the relatives might have some doctors also and believe me most of the doctor relatives are the most most of the time rather than being helpful they are more of the time confrontative and nuisance okay there are various reasons there might be a GP who is very interested in grabbing your patient away and put to some hospital so that he gets his you know share of the whole flash or there might be a over conscientious relative who is not aware of homeopathy and he will feel that he is irresponsible to allow a homeopath to treat so you have all those people in the extreme you got the patient's anxieties some of the conditions or some symptoms are such that your remedy will take care take time to you know solve it those symptoms can be relieved without interfering with your medicines so that means we require a good knowledge of the ancillary care that we you know support you always in infect infection case any infectious disease you also require information so that how the case would not be infectious to others in the family and all this has to be part of the focus when you're treating them see if any of these you're leaving out if a patient leaves your cabin without listening about diet without listening about what hygiene care he has to take without listening about what reassurance he needs from you without listening about what message he has to give to family members you are left a job incomplete any such case you give the best remedy best dose and you might still have a drop out because any, these factors if they are not cared for anybody will put finger at your competence the doctor didn't tell you